Old wives' tales is that you should tell your bees about births, deaths and marriages. Don't know if that's true or not, but um, apparently the bees need to know these things. The Zarki bees came from us having the garden and it seemed like the next logical step to do. You were creating a little bit of nature and what happened, nature was coming to us. And keeping bees has opened the doors a little bit wider to our building. People read about it, they find out about it, they want to know about it, they want to be reassured about it. Um, but, but more so, people are concerned about, about nature and they're, they're sort of quite glad that you know, bees have a safe environment in the city. In, 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 in many instances now, the city's becoming more friendly for nature than the countryside. Bees have a great variety of food to eat in the city. Um, the pub on the corner has a, has a, um, a living wall with, with flowers on it. There's, there's hanging baskets outside pubs. There's a variety of um, trees and shrubs and flowering plants in Regent's Park. So all this is providing a great variety of food for bees to eat and for nature to, to congregate in. So the city, bizarrely enough, is becoming friendlier for nature than the countryside is at times. Uh, we had a beekeeping course given to us by a chap called Brian McCullum who wrote a book called Bees in the City. We then started doing the, the lessons up here um, and it was a little bit unnerving the first time. I, I, I've never handled bees before so the first time sort of opening a hive and having sort of 20 or 30,000 insects suddenly just popping up in front of you that you know could sting you is a little bit like, okay, um, it's a little bit nerve-wracking at first. So there's our two hives. I'm in the process now of bedding these down for winter. So we've got about 10 kilos of honey off this hive here, which, we, which we're going to harvest next week. Um, so we should have a quick look in here. And there you see, there's a whole lot of bees. So this is the sort of end of the year now where there's not a whole lot for the bees to eat. So you can, at this time of year, feed them a bit of syrup. Look on that there, you'll see there's a slightly older capped honey there and slightly newer honey they're in the process of making now. You can see it's full of nectar and they're just in the process of capping it over and that will then become food for them in the winter time. They're fairly calm and happy now, they're like us, they don't like their house being open if it's not a nice bright sunny day. Some of the challenges that the beekeepers face, certainly in an urban environment, is making sure that the hive is healthy throughout the summer. You're looking for varroa mite, you're looking for deformed wing virus and you know, lots of hives have been wiped out by these by these pests, really, and it, it's it's quite difficult to, to, to you know you constantly got to keep on top of it. Um, and the other thing, the other thing that we have very little control over, is the weather. And I a couple of years ago, when it was a very very cold winter, I did lose one of my hives, which is quite tragic because I'm not a farmer and I got took it quite personally. Um, so the idea is, once we've made our, when we do make our harvest, you have to judge what stays and what goes because obviously the reason they make honey is to survive the winter. Um, the one thing um, that London is, is very keen on and has lots of hives now, they all want the honey but they're actually not thinking about the fodder to actually give the bees the flower nectar that they need. So I, this, you know, having the bees has actually affected the way I garden and the way I teach gardening as well. It's flowers like English wildflowers or flowers with a big open face um, and then things like vegetables that I say that actually have bolted uh, and have gone to seed and their flowers are very productive. Cabbages produce a lot of beautiful yellow flowers and a lot of uh, nectar there for the bees. Um, up here in the herb garden we've got lavender and we've got a, a wonderful herb brought by the Romans called black whorehound. It doesn't look like much but the bees go crazy on it. It has little purple flowers and I think they get a lot of nectar from it. Um, the challenge is keeping them in a commercial environment like this is firstly convincing people that it's a good idea. Um, people love honey and they love to, you know, do, do the thing, but th there's always this concern of are we going to get stung, are they going to attack us, and I always try and tell people their bees are not cobras. They're not going to do anything to you. All the bees want to do is make honey. That's what they're here for. Um, and, the, and the other challenges in the summer is actually making the time um, to look at the hives um, as a person who works in an office, you know, the phone's ringing, you've got 100 emails to do, you've got presentations to do, you've got pitches to organise for, and you actually have to make time for this. So you need, need, it is a commitment. You can't just say, I fancy doing it for a week and then I don't, I'll fancy not doing it for two weeks. It's a, it's a steady, constant thing you have to do, especially during the summer months. 
for a company, the advantages are it's just letting staff learn other skills that aren't necessarily in the narrow aims of the business. Um, it's a great thing to say to clients, come upstairs and have a look at our bees. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's an all round, everyone wants to know about them. It's in the news that bees are struggling. So in our own little bit, we as a company and as myself personally as a beekeeper are trying to do our little bit, however small, to actually make the world a, a nicer place for bees and for bumblebees as well.